So what I'm going to show right now is the process for assembling your automata in Fusion 360. Now what I already have is I have a set of parts that are created in Fusion uh, that are not assembled in any way. So I've, I've, on my case, I made these in Onshape and imported them through stat files. In your case, you may have designed them right in Fusion. Uh, your files uh, may already look like your assembly, like everything was assembled or created in place. Mine are just a series of loose parts. But the process is going to be basically the same. I need to add some uh, some mates or some joints in Onshape's terminology to connect these things together, both physically for the enclosure, as well as the motion things that I need for my actual automata mechanism. So right now I have my uh, my bottom plate. What I'm going to do in Onshape, or in Fusion rather, is I'm going to uh, first off do move copy. So if you look under uh, modify, move copy is one of your choices. I'm going to start by just uh, making sure that uh, that this is sort of aligned the way I want. Now, one important distinction between Fusion and Onshape is that in Fusion we can only assemble things that are components. So these things are already components because I imported them and I'm going to move this component and we'll talk more about components in just a sec. So first I'm going to flip this up so that it's kind of lying flat. I'm going to say I want to rotate it by 90 degrees. Uh, I also want to rotate this thing around 90 degrees so that it can uh, so it can kind of lay in the orientation that I want. And I'm going to click OK. So I've got my, my boxes bottom here. One thing I do need to do is come over here and ground this. So in Fusion, we want to make sure that at least one part in our assembly is grounded. I'm going to right click on that and choose ground. And I'm going to click capture position. So that basically just says like start it, uh, keep it where it is, don't keep it where it started from. Okay, so my box bottom is grounded. Now I'm going to start assembling my side and top and other parts to that. So in Fusion, we're going to use the assemble menu. We're going to choose joint. Uh, Fusion's assembly menu is a little bit different than Onshape. Uh, the first thing I need to do is, is determine what kind of motion I want. By default, these will be rigid joints. So this is equivalent to like the, um, the, uh, like the fixed joints in, uh, or fixed mates in Onshape. So I'm going to use a rigid connector there. And now the process is really similar. It's grayed out this first one, which is okay, because I'm going to go through and I'm going to choose the, uh, I'm going to choose a, a connector, a joint connector right here. There's a joint origin there. That one grays out to show me that I've just selected a joint connector on that one. So I can't, I can't assemble it to itself. That would be a little bit weird. So instead, what I'm going to do is find the joint connector here. It's going to put it in the right uh, orientation, but the position is wrong. So I could start kind of doing my offset by dragging that part using the arrow here. And then I can always go in and dial in that offset more precisely if I want it here. So I think that's probably 2.375 because there's no good reason it would be uh, a random number like that. And now that looks great. And click OK. Now I only have one of those side panels. Uh, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and go with that. I'm going to assemble a couple more things. So I'm going to make another joint. Uh, Fusion will always default to the most recent motion type. So I'm going to keep using a rigid joint. Uh, what I'd like to do next is put my top plate on. So I'm going to choose my mate connector on this top part here. I'm going to do the same thing. Here's my center one. I'm going to zoom back and I'm going to find my center mate connector on this top plate uh, that I've created. And it's going to look like it moved it away, which is one thing that's a little bit confusing that Fusion likes to do. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that it's going to all snap back correctly when I finish this. So I know that this needs to be rotated. I'm going to rotate this part because that's the one that it started from. And I'm going to drag this part over some, again, because this is the part that it started from. And just like before, I can go in and look at my right side connection. I could dial in those things. It's probably uh, 2.375 to get that exactly right on. And I'm going to click a check. Now, what I was just talking about just happened, which is that even though it looked like it moved that side part around to match the top plate, when I accepted the joint, it snapped everything back the way we wanted to. So don't let that kind of confuse you. Uh, I'm going to add a couple more joints real quick, and then we'll get into the uh, to the last little bit. I'm going to use this axle bushing in here. You don't have to, but I'm going to choose to use that. I'm going to drop that in place. That looks good. 
And now I'm going to put that axle inside my axle bushing. So this is the first place where in Fusion we're going to use a different type other than rigid. We're going to come over here and we're going to use a revolute. So just like I've done before, I'm going to choose the center uh, mate connector. i got to come back to my position tab. I'm going to use the center mate connector here. And I'm going to find the center mate connector on my axle bushing. And Fusion does a nice job of showing you a little animation here. Uh, I'm going to drag this axle back a little bit so we have kind of a handle sticking out. And I'm going to click OK. So now I've got my axle in place here, and it revolves, and that all looks great. Uh, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to put that hex cam on here. Uh, this is one place where I've got to go back to a rigid joint again. So like I said, Fusion always remembers the last motion type that you choose. So I'm going to come back to rigid, and now I'm going to come back here and start choosing my two mate connectors. I want the center one here, and I want the center one here. So on this, I can just click on this... Uh, uh, whoops, that didn't quite work. Let me uh, clear that and we'll try selecting that again. Um, is it going to allow me to? Oh, I think this is being weird because I imported this. It's not going to allow me to, to choose that center part. So what we can actually do instead is something slightly different. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually come in here and I'm going to choose to assemble this to this edge. And then I'm going to grab the edge of my axle as well. So usually we wouldn't do that, but in this case, that's actually going to be easiest. So I'm going to click and choose the edge here, and now that looks pretty good. And just like before, I'm going to drag this over, get my offset correct. I'll go to my right view to make sure that I can see that it lines up. And this way, I can do a quick check by looking at the top, making sure I can see the cam directly on there, and I can even drag it over a little bit more just to kind of get it centered on that circle. And then I can click OK. So again, my little check is that I can kind of drag this around, make sure that my hex cam rotates along there. And then the last piece I need to do here is I need to get my, uh, my follower in place. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the one that I exported from Onshape earlier. So I've already gone into Onshape. I've opened up that follow with point edge, and I've exported it as a step file. I'm just going to click and drag that over into my design. If it'll allow me to do that. Or I can right click and, and choose insert in the current design. I think Fusion's just being a little slow. So that looks great. I'm going to go ahead and put this in place now. Um, when I dropped that in, by the way, it showed me a move copy. So one, uh, one little tip that you can do is, let me undo that, the insert into my uh, current design. Uh, so one, one little tip that you can do, you get sort of a free move copy when you first drag it in there. So I know that I want this to be upside down and turn 90 degrees. So I'm actually going to start by just rotating it 180 degrees this way and 90 degrees this way. And that's kind of like a free move. I don't have to go back and do that later. It's a separate command. It's already good to go. So I can click OK. And now when I insert it, it's already kind of in the right orientation, which is nice. <clears throat> so I'm going to close my data panel and show one last thing here. Uh, in Fusion, I'm just going to go back to my assemble, tell it that I want to join. And this time under motion, what I want to do uh, is tell it that this is a slider mate. So I could put an axle, I probably should put a follower guide in here first. Let's actually do that real quick. I'm going to make a copy of this. So I'm going to hit move copy. I'm going to choose create a copy. I'm going to drag that copy over and up, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, and click OK, and I'm going to make a quick, one more quick rigid assembly there, and I'm just going to say that I want to assemble this follower guide into this hole, there we go, because now what I'd like to do is use my slider joint to mate the follower to that follower guide, so let's try that one more time, joint, Motion slider. Now I can come back to my position tab and I can keep going. So I'm going to choose my uh, my mate connector on the center there. Mate connector on the center there. And Fusion again does a nice job of showing you that kind of animation of this moving up and down. Okay, I'm going to click OK. And now we can do a quick check that that follower guide is moving up and down. That's where I'm going to stop in this one. We'll talk more later about how we get 
the relationship between this follower and this cam, but that should give you enough to go on for now.